Hello, everybody. I'm Dimitris. I'm co-founder of Mist.io, which is about managing and monitoring servers across different clouds and being able to respond to alerts from anywhere you are using your smartphone or tablet. Um, but let's first take a step back and take a look at the internet, which at the end of the day, it's uh, just a bunch of servers and some other things. And uh, one thing we know about things, and especially about servers, is that they fail, and they fail all the time. And uh, when they do, somebody has to get to the data center and uh, fix them and replace the disks or the fans, the power supply units. Um, but then there comes the cloud. And the servers now start looking more like software because hardware becomes somebody else's problem. And we can write scripts, we can develop scripts that do server operations. Uh, but the time of the single cloud didn't last for long. Uh, initially, it was primarily Amazon, but uh, now we have Rackspace, Google, IBM, Softlayer, uh, with Softlayer, uh, Linode, uh, quite a lot of uh, different providers, an increasing number with different features, different specific specifications, and uh, different pricing policies. It does make sense to combine uh, to get the best out of each provider. But in order to do so, we need to use different tools and different APIs. So management becomes pretty hard. And the Apache LibCloud comes to the rescue. I don't know if you had the chance to be in the previous session. Um, it's a unified programming uh, interface for many different clouds. I think more than 30 different uh, uh, supported providers right now. Um, it, um, it started in uh, 2009, I think, by CloudKick, and now it's an Apache project. It's written in Python, which I think it's a, a big plus. And it makes our scripts, our cross-cloud scripts, quite a bit cleaner and nicer. But the problem is that still, that things keep failing. Uh, nowadays, it's not so much on the hardware level, because even if they fail on the hardware, it's somebody else's problem. But uh, still, the software will reach unexpected conditions or will uh, run out of resources, of assigned resources. Um, so for fixing the software, we need uh, the developers. We need to find the right person and get him to um, in front of a computer. Usually, it will just be a few commands that will restore normality, uh, but uh, yeah, we have to get him to um, a laptop or a desktop computer to send those commands, which, uh, which sucks if you're doing something else at the time. And uh, that's where, that's our starting point. Me and my co-founders of Mistio, we used to run a software consultancy uh, in Greece, but we had clients in, uh, in Australia, the US, and Europe across different time zones, continents, and they had their systems in different clouds. So we had to manage them and uh, we were responsible for maintaining them. And uh, we were quite a small team, not, uh, barely, not quite enough for 24-7 uh, uptime, which was expected by our clients. And uh, the other thing we know about things is that they fail badly and they do so at the very worst possible moment. So it used to happen, our system used to fail when we were on leave, on a desolate beach, or on top of a mountain, or anywhere without a laptop. And uh, it's, we can't expect everybody to, every developer to be in arms, in arms reach of a laptop or desktop computer. But nowadays we carry around pretty much always powerful computers with touchscreens, smartphones, or tablets that are always connected to the internet. And uh, we started thinking that we should be able to use these computers to get our job done and fix stuff, uh, do server operations. Uh, we did some research. We looked at the available tools. We couldn't find anything good enough. We tried installing SSH, mobile SSH clients. 
but then we had to store all our private keys in every device we were using, and uh, for every keystroke, we uh, it had to travel to the server and then back to our smartphone in order to see the result, and that wasn't working out so, so well. So we started scratching our own needs and uh, building a tool that would, would fix our own problem. And uh, after a lot of scratching and a lot of itching, the result is Mist.io. Uh, it helps you manage servers across clouds using any, dev any device uh, that can access the web. Um, it provides actionable monitoring in the sense that uh, you get an alert and from anywhere you are, you tap on the alert and uh, you can directly take action, send a command that uh, will fix the problem. It's an HTML5 responsive web app, which will adapt to any screen size. And uh, it communicates with the uh, RESTful API backend, uh, cross-cloud API backend, built on top of FlipCloud. So you get the advantage of combining uh, different clouds, both public ones and private ones, in hybrid setups, but also bare metal servers. Um, you get monitoring and automation, uh, real-time analytics of system and application metrics. And based on those metrics, you can define rules that trigger, trigger alerts or automated actions. So for example, when the load increases, Mist.io can uh, launch new machines for upscaling, new servers, or for downscaling, or reboot servers, or run scripts that restart services, or pretty much anything you need. And when you have to, um, when you need manual intervention, you can use the command cell, which is optimized for touch screens, um, and control your servers from anywhere. So enough said, let me show you how it actually works. So this is the home page. I've configured here four different backends. Um, Amazon EC2 in the US West Coast, Rackspace in Oregon, an OpenStack-based private cloud we run on the bare metal server. I can add more backends like that. Just select the provider, enter the credentials, and you're all set. If you add a bare metal server, you just need to enter the host name and select the SSH key. Uh, for different providers, you would need to put the API keys. Yeah, yeah, at this point, we support Amazon EC2, NefoScale, uh, DigitalOcean, uh, Linode, OpenStack-based private clouds, um, Rackspace, SoftLayer, and HP. So after you configure your backends, you can uh, see a list of your running servers under unified interface. Um, you can filter them or tag them into groups. So for example, I'll tag this one to be in the production group. I can spin up new machines. So I think I, I need another app server. Um, I'll do it on uh, Amazon using um, yeah, Ubuntu is fine. A micro instance on this data center. I want to use this SSH keeper. Here I can configure a script. So, um, for example, maybe I want to install uh, Apache, uh, Apache web server. Uh, I see how much it will cost me. So I can compare uh, pricing costs across two different clouds. And this will launch the server. It's now pending. Uh, it will be up and running in a few minutes. But in the meantime, let's go to an existing one. Um, so I created this one six hours ago. I have the uptime here. Um, we have the, the basic and the advanced metadata. metadata. I can reboot, uh, shut down, or destroy the server. I can use the command cell from any device I'm using. And I don't need to store my keys from anywhere I am, or in any, in any of my devices. And uh, then I can also enable monitoring and automation, which will uh, automatically install CollectD. CollectD is a monitoring agent. It will uh, gather the, the different metrics. 
Um, this will also take a couple of minutes, so we don't have to wait. Let's go to an existing a machine that already has monitoring. Um, this not ah, yeah, this one. Uh, so we have uh, graphs, real-time analytics for uh, uh, the different metrics. By default, we display the average load, the CPU usage, the disk and network usage, and memory. Here I can uh, define uh, rules. So when the, uh, the load is over some threshold, I want to get an alert. And uh, maybe when the network uh, transmitted packets are over for 4,500 kilobytes per second, then maybe I want to run a command, restart some services. Um, I can also assign uh, different keys to this server to share access with other people. And this should deploy the key. Ah, sorry, I don't have cell access on this one. Let me get to another one. Yeah, here. I already have two keys. Let me put a third one. Yeah, here it is. Um, apart from managing the machines themselves, I can uh, browse my images. I have some favorite ones that I like to use. I can search for others. Let's see. Man. Yeah, maybe I will favor this one. I can use it right away to spin up a new machine. But let's not do that. And then I can manage my keys, create new ones. Either upload them or generate them online. And uh, yeah, here's the machine we just uh, created. And um, this is the app server we just enabled monitoring for, and now we have that data coming in. So this is it uh, for at this point. Let's. Uh, if we take a look under the hood, we'll see uh, the front end, which is built using jQuery Mobile and Ember JS. It runs, it's built on JavaScript, of course. It runs on the browser and communicates over a RESTful API to the server, which in turn, turn uh, um, runs libcloud and, uh, in order to communicate to the different, different clouds with their native APIs and Fabric to send SSH commands to the target servers. Uh, in every VM, as I said, we install CollectD, an open source monitoring agent, which uh, collects the data, the monitoring data, and sends them over to um, the monitor server, which is um, basically graphite, and uh, some custom code that we've built, and some alert logic. Um, the server side the application itself is built, built using Pyramid, a uh, web, web framework based on Python, and we also use the UWSGI uh, Python web server. So Mist.io uh, is an open source software component, but we, we're also a startup, and we provide a freemium hosted service. In the hosted service, monitoring comes for free, so you, uh, management comes for, for free, sorry. So you can spin up new machines, reboot and destroy them, and uh, use the cell to send commands. Uh, while uh, monitoring and automation is the, prime, uh, the premium part of the service. Uh, if you prefer to host it locally, you can use the open source uh, component. And um, you can still use the hosted uh, monitoring service through the open source component. And if you, you need a full in-house custom installation, then you should talk to us. We can probably help you out. This is, that's how you get started with the open source client. Just uh, get uh, the Git repo. The virtual env step is optional, but uh, 
it uh, decreases the chances of conflicts with uh, system-wide Python packages. Uh, just run build out and then you're ready to add your backends and uh, manage your machines. Um, so next steps is uh, we're currently packaging uh, Mist.io with Apache Cordoba in order to put it out in uh, the different uh, mobile marketplaces in the App Store, Google Play, and Firefox OS Marketplace. We're about to roll out support for custom monitoring metrics. So right now you can uh, mostly use the standard metrics like CPU, disk, and memory. But uh, you will uh, soon be able to define any metric you like, like how many users are logged in in your application or uh, how many requests your web server is getting. And based on those metrics, uh, configure rules and uh, events and automation. And uh, we're adding support for multi-user uh, access management. So you will be able to share your servers with your colleagues and your friends and give them restricted access. And um, uh, they will, uh, there will be an audit log to see what they've done and the access will be revocable. Um, our philosophy is to start with mobile first and uh, then go to the tablet. And now we're doing uh, user optimizations for larger screens to improve the user experience. And uh, Google Compute Engine is almost ready to be, support for Google Compute Engine is almost ready. We'll also be adding support for Docker. So apart from VMs, you'll be able to manage containers. And uh, later on, uh, you'll also get DNS management uh, through LibCloud, through uh, uh, Amazon Shroud 53 and Rackspace and uh, a few more providers, as well as uh, managing storage and load balancers. Um, so, I don't know if you have any questions at this point. Um, I think I am very early, yeah. Um, so yeah, these were my slides. I, I'm a bit early, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and uh, check out both the uh, hosted service or the open source component and uh, yeah please come talk to me or send me an email um, yeah right now on github let me open it yeah, I'm logged in now so I see everything um, there is a private repo which is about the user management and uh, uh, the website of the private service. So right, right now through the open source component, you can uh, uh, manage your machines, but for monitoring out of the box, you will have to use the hosted service. You need an account with a hosted service. We are open sourcing uh, the monitoring uh, part as well under the Apache license, um, but there's still some glue logic, some missing pieces if you want to build, to set up your own self-hosted uh, solution with multiple users and uh, access rights. Uh, but we have an open source strategy and we will be open sourcing more and more of the stuff. Um, so, yeah. All right, thank you very much. If you sign up during the Apache conference, you can get 50% uh, off for the premium monitoring and automation for the next three months. And uh, automation. automation that uh, you can uh, define uh, actions based on uh, monitoring metrics like uh, auto scaling or downscaling 
or maybe restarting services and that part. So here, maybe when the memory usage, yeah, when the memory usage is over 81%, for example, I want to run, yeah, to restart the patch, for example, because many, many applications have memory leaks and after a while, yeah, the memory usage gets after. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's based on our own uh, experience of issues. I mean, after uh, addressing the same issue again and again, we want to automate the fix. Usually, it's usually you can't fix right now the right away the memory leak, but you can. There is some workaround like a restart, so why not automate that? Um, in the conditional shell, the supported metrics are, uh, can be used. And as I told you, uh, we will add support for custom metrics. So here there will be a button, add metric, and you will be able to either select one of the existing uh, collect deep plugins uh, or write a very simple script that uh, generates a series of uh, numbers that will appear in a graph. And uh, based on this uh, sequence, you will be able to configure rules as well. Um, maybe you want to see also, oops. And the pricing for the hosted service depends on the number of servers. Uh, as I said, management is free for, and will always be free for unlimited servers. And then for monitoring and automation, there is a fee depending on the number of servers. All right, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please come talk to me.